Okay, so question six. I just said that I think the toughest two marks on the paper. They, you were given this diagram and you had this on your answer booklet and you were asked to sketch a second curve on the copy of the diagram to show that the equation there has two real roots. State the equation of the second curve. So, so actually there's, there's quite a lot going on here, isn't there? There's quite a lot for us to get into to start with. Before we do any sketching, we've got to recognise the link between that and that. I think most people spotted quite nicely that, that if we rearrange this equation here, we've got, oh, we've got x to the 4 minus 8x. It's supposed to be an x then. Um, so is that. Uh, <laughs> equals, I'm going to do that again. That's better. x to the 4 minus 8x. That's not much better. Equals 9 minus x squared. So the graph we're supposed to be drawing on there is the graph of 9 minus x squared. <coughs> Great. 9 minus x squared, we know all about that. That's a, a <coughs> quadratic curve. It's an upside down one because it's a minus coefficient of x squared. So it's an unhappy sad curve, an unhappy curve. It would go through plus 9 on the y-axis. We also know it would go through plus or minus 3, wouldn't it? Because 9 minus x squared goes through plus or minus 3. We also know from this curve... This is x squared minus 8x now, isn't it? We were told that. So these points are going to be at uh, plus or minus 8 on there. Is that right? Um, so we've got, we've got something about where this is going to be. It's not plus or minus 8. Sorry. I, I, right, let me concentrate on this. It's not plus or minus 8. Factorise that. That's x brackets x cubed minus 8, isn't it? So that is 0, and that is 2. That's an important point. Okay? That graph is x times x cubed minus 8. So we've got, we've got 0 and 2 as our roots. So if that's 2, the next root must be over that side of it. So our graph is going to have to do... That kind of shape, just about got away with that. That needs to be marked as going through 9. It needs to be symmetrical. Yeah, I think I'd give myself that as just about that top point. And this was just two marks. And you had to tick so many boxes with this. So, for the, for the first mark, you had to have a graph that was a uh, symmetrical, N-shaped quadratic curve, N-shaped parabola. Symmetrical about the y-axis, going through a, a, a point up there on the y-axis, and it had to be symmetrical. The symmetrical point was key to that. Um, so that was M1. And now the second mark, the accuracy mark, was for so much you had to have two points of intersection indicated on your curve, because it said, show that the equation has two real roots. So you had to indicate that these two points here were the roots. And you could do that by a little bit of text, writing to say that crosses twice are two roots, or you could just circle the two roots to show that that's where they were. So there we go, we've got two roots. We've not got the mark yet. Those two roots had to both be um, above the x-axis. So there had to be one root in the first quadrant and the second root in the second quadrant. So we're still on this second A mark. We have to have circled them. They both have to be above the x-axis. Still not got the mark yet. State the equation of the second curve. So to complete this second mark, we also had to state the equation of the curve. As this stands here, I scored 1 for part 1, because I haven't stated the equation. It's kind of obvious that I know what the equation is. It's 9 minus x squared. Still not got the mark. So, that, that does suppose to say 9 minus x squared. I don't know why we're now working on 
Okay, how many marks have I now got? One. One. Because I've just written 9 minus x squared. I haven't stated any equation there. Eh? I've written 9 minus x squared. Finally, I've now got both marks. <laughs> the number of things you had to do to get those two marks was incredible. That, I, that's why I think they were... That second A mark here was the single toughest mark on the whole paper. It was worth about five marks, just that, that second mark, for all the things that you had to do there. And if you didn't tick all of those boxes, you didn't get the mark. Really, really tough. Yes, I. For the first mark, did you have to... Do I have the where it crossed? Did it have to be after the point two, or could you have got the first mark with it being? Um, it it was for a an inverted parabola that was symmetrical about the y-axis with the maximum point pretty much on the y-axis. So I didn't get the mark, but it looks roughly symmetrical. <coughs> Is that not symmetrical? Huh? Oh, I don't know. We'll put it to a class vote once we finish the uh, video. I don't think that's symmetrical. Yeah, maybe you get the mark. I this was I I had to I have to admit that this I wasn't sure about whether these were symmetrical all the time. And you just have to use your judgment about whether you thought it was symmetrical or not. I kept I kept asking Mrs. Maths Dave if she thought it was symmetrical. <coughs> and she would give me her opinion and I'd put it into the balance. But it's tough to mark this one. Right, shall we press on? Part two. The larger root of the equation is denoted by alpha. Show by calculation that alpha is between 2.1 and 2.2. This is a, a lovely, really nice setup of a change of sign question, isn't it? So we're gonna, if we're gonna write it kind of in full detail, we're maybe gonna say let f of x be x to the 4 plus x squared minus 8x minus 9, f of 2.1, f of 2.2, we're going to calculate these, um, stick it in your calculator, use the table function if you want to, f of 2.1 is about minus 1.9, is it? f of 2.2 is 1.6, we've got a change of sign, we need to state there's a change of sign, I would love them to have also said that you have to state that the function is continuous in that range, especially considering how tough that second mark was in part one. But they didn't care, so you didn't have to write it. Um, I'm going to write it just for completeness. It doesn't look like I've written it. Uh, it's a change of sign and it's continuous, therefore the root is between those two values. Oh man, the whiteboard is blue. There we go, <laughs> two marks for that. Um, part B, use an iterative process based on the equation with a suitable starting value. We've talked about this before, to find alpha correct three decimal places. Um, so, what's a suitable starting value? Well, the roots between 2.1 and 2.2. So either 2.1 or 2.2 <coughs> would be a suitable starting value. Quite a few students started at 2, which is not that unreasonable, that, that seems plausible. Um, you actually, it would work so long as you started between minus 1 and 9, you would, you would get the root. But sensibly, 2.1 or 2.2 we're talking about here. Um, if we start with x0 is 2.1, you just have to write down the results of every iteration. So 2.1 gives you 2.1506. 5, it then gives you 2.15531. You then get 2.15575. 5, and we're pretty sure that we're there. 2.15579. 5, now, uh, the question wanted it. Oh, read the question really carefully. The question wanted it to three decimal places this time, not to three significant figures. Um, at which point here, we haven't done it. We haven't got, we haven't got all the marks. We've got two. Oh, we've got three out of four marks for getting this far. What are we missing? Why have I only got three out of four? The, the final answer, what x equals or what, what alpha equals... 
it was Alan from the roof, like it was in 2.156 to three decimal places. You had to actually draw the conclusion at the end to get that. Okay? Although you got away with just underlining it, it needed to be three decimal places. 